This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Sporlos, a.k.a. The Vanishing, from 1988, directed by George Schluger. The tagline from Letterboxd, Who has seen this woman? And the synopsis, Rex and Saskia are enjoying a biking holiday in France when, stopping at a gas station, Saskia disappears. Confounded, Rex searches everywhere, but to no avail. Three years later, he's still obsessed with finding her, pleading his case on television, putting up posters, and ruining his uh, new relationship in the process. Eventually, an unassuming chemistry teacher, Raymond, approaches Rex, uh, intimating that he knows what happened. So, RJ, uh, one of the great titles for a film... (laughs) What do you mean, Spurlos? Spurlos. <clears throat> Which language is that? Is it uh, Danish or is it French? Uh, I don't know. Isn't this movie a weird blend of? Yeah, it's the uh, two? it's very continental. Ooh, yeah, continental! Very, very, Look at those very, big very, words. Very EU. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah. So this, whenever I see the poster for this, like uh, with the actual I guess, European title, was we'll say, uh, it's always like. That looks like a comedy. Like it looks so goofy. It it doesn't mm-hmm. it, it it does not match with the uh, a kind of like really amazing iconic poster for the uh, DVD uh, art mm-hmm. for the first uh, Vanishing DVD on Criterion ages ago. Uh, replaced now with kind of the blander kind of like overblown uh, dot pattern cover that they use yep. now. I much prefer the moody uh, dark uh, gas station one because it just evokes uh, the doom and dread that this movie uh, fills me with every time I watch it. Mm. Um, so it's been a while since I'd seen this last. Uh, I've only seen it now three times. The mm-hmm. first time uh, <clears throat> it was one of those movies that came up on IFC and uh, I just kind of knew the title because like, oh, that's one of those criterions and it's really difficult to rent those around here. And, oh, hey, my friend says it's on TV. Let's record it off of there and check it out. See what this European movie about a disappearing woman's all about. And, uh, yeah, uh, that movie, ha- this movie has stuck with me for a long, long time. Um, one of my greatest fears, RJ, uh, about <clears throat> in, in, in this world is mm-hmm. like mysterious, unexplained disappearances. Um, I think maybe, I don't know, most people probably don't like them because they're unsettling this idea that you could just disappear or someone you love in particular, I think, could just disappear mm-hmm. and you have no idea what happened to them. It's like you never find a body. You don't know what happened. They're just gone. That's like, that's really messed up because uh, we're, we're quite connected to our uh, material forms and whatnot and uh, being denied that closure and like, being left to your own imagination about what could happen to somebody, uh, mm-hmm. that really messes you up. And, uh, I've spent, uh, a few nights in my life where I just stupidly kind of stumble across like websites that are all about unsolved mysteries, like particularly unexplained disappearances and reading mm-hmm. the details of them. And they're so, I don't know, like relatable in the fact that it could happen to anybody anywhere and you have no idea what caused it. Nothing. There's like so little information beyond the fact that it happened to another person just like you. Um, so one of the things that I think is a strength of this movie, uh, mm-hmm. and I was like, when I was watching this movie, uh, very stressed out while watching it. Cause I know where it's all going. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just like, it doesn't matter. It's not like you're, you're, when you watch other movies and you're just appreciating it for like, Oh, this is comfortable. I'm watching a horror movie. It doesn't really work as a horror movie anymore. This movie mm-hmm. really still works horrifically to me. Uh, cause you're just like, Oh God. And then that scene's going to happen. And Oh God, oh, man, it's, it just induces that in me. It messes me up. Uh, so like why really, really, really like this movie. Uh, I also mm-hmm. kind of hate it cause it's not like a movie I want to pop in and just check out cause it makes me feel uneasy, uh, while mm-hmm. I'm watching it. Cause while these characters wreck Rex and Saskia, they're like loosely drawn and they're kind of these like this bland sort of stand in like that's kind of intentional, right? Um, mm-hmm. cause essentially this movie is a very artfully made, uh, feature length episode of unsolved mysteries. Uh, but I guess it goes beyond that a little bit into like, it's a thriller. Uh, but it plays with like everything kind of in plain sight. Um, like nothing, like pretty well all the action happens in like broad daylight till the very, very end. And the whole time, you know, exactly what's happening to a degree, mm-hmm. Um, it shows you lots of stuff. So you're not just like, what's going on? It's kind of like, what does that mean when you see it? Um, so that's, uh, 
I think a really well done trick. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, man, this movie freaks me out a bit. Uh, <laughs> I, I keep stressing Nerd. that. Yeah, I don't know. It's like one of those like true like successful horror movies in a lot of ways because it actually isn't just like an enjoyable film to watch, and it is that too. Uh, it's very well made. Uh, I think there's like a lot of like really great like uh, subtle filmmaking things going on and this Mm -hmm. becomes particularly evident when you watch the uh subsequent remake from the same director and you start get there you start appreciating like how good stuff is Mm -hmm. um on this watch i don't know should i talk about what this movie plays out in like i'm kind of just talking about my response to a movie and i haven't actually talked about uh do whatever feels right man like if you want to get into it if you don't that's it's it's your day buddy do whatever feels oh, oh, good all right thanks man thanks yeah. so uh yeah so Re- rex and saskia we we open up with them because we're introduced to them because this is like kind of their story um it, this is like this like oh they're just driving around like anyone could be in the mountains or like in some sort of like kind of open area on vacation on some sort of trip and uh there's nothing to it they're just like people talking there's nothing like it's like Richard Linklater ish. They're just mm-hmm. like they're not they're not even having deep conversations. They're not particularly charismatic. They're just like there. They're just folk. Um and that's like again a strength of the film. Um and then you get like kind of this one setup for a tense moment where, oh, they've run out of gas in this dark tunnel where like massive like tr- semi trucks come blasting through with like rock quarry stuff and like that. And uh, you get this like weird argument, stressful bit where like, well, we have to go get gas. And she's like, no, we're going to get killed here. And they just like, they argue like you do with uh, mm-hmm. partners. And uh, you know, the setup is just like, it's just like this n- kind of nothing little scene that like, just kind of like, creates tension like out of nothing really effortlessly um and then it kind of builds to them like you know they separate they regret it they kind of argue but they kind of get over it and they're like it just sets up this relationship that like okay we won't do that ever again Mm -hmm. and of course they get to this gas station uh they're just hanging out there's this footage of this guy who's like putting on a cast in a car (laughs) and he's just like milling around doing stuff and you know something's going to happen and then like she just disappears on old Rex. Rex is left not knowing what's going on. Um, and it just plays out in this very naturalistic way. Uh, I guess like, I mean, the way that I think it would happen to most people. Um, you you would be like, where the hell do they go? This is really weird. They must be around this corner. Nope. Mm-hmm. Has anyone seen them? Um, the one thing that doesn't even play up that much is the fact that uh, uh, Saskia has the car keys. <laughs> And he can't, mm-hmm. and, he, and he can't go anywhere. And he like, there's nothing he can do except for wait. And uh, and it's kind of interesting in both films. They don't really play that up at all. It's kind of just a thing that's there, which yeah. is, yeah, it's just of note, I guess. And, like, it's like it's kind of a plot point in in the original where it's like uh, a, a place for him to believe the guy who's telling him that he did it because he actually has the keys. Yes. Where in the second one, it's more of like an afterthought. It's like, hey, check out. I got these keys, brother. And then I don't know. I'll, I'll get to the remake oh, later. Boy, but, we, uh, whoa, whoa. I, I got a lot of things to say about that thing. Oh, we, we got things to say. It's always fun yeah. to watch these uh, 90s movies. I always have like a page to say about those things where sometimes uh-huh. talking about something you actually really like that's like well made. It's like, what can you say? Other like You can't even shit talk this. It's just like trying to like, articulate what you like about it and how it works well. Mm-hmm. So uh, the movie then t- takes this uh, bold leap and then shows you the flip side of who this guy putting on a fake cast is all about old Raymond, Raymond Lamorne. And mm-hmm. man, RJ, I, f- I fucking hate this guy. I hate him. Ray. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. So there's so- it's something about that little beard goatee. He's got, it's like, it's like, he's just like a banal dude. He's every guy you've ever seen in, like he works in an mm-hmm. IT department. He's walking mm-hmm. around in cargo shorts, sandals. He doesn't do anything. He's he, a, he's opinionated. He just spews like pithy little remarks. Just condescending asshole. He's can I interrupt th- for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it, my man. A lot of these descriptors are a lot like the guy I'm looking at right here on this Skype. He's got this weird goatee. Goatee. He's got these pithy remarks. He wears sandals all the time. <laughs> I heard he loves feet. 
Ugh. Anyways, continue about uh, your description of Ray and just be cognizant that uh, you're talking about yourself here oh at the same time. Yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. That's me to the <laughs> my wife and kids. Yep. Scaring them with spiders. Mm-hmm. I hate this. I, I hate. I hate him. He's just uh, visually. He's just like perfectly visually cast. upsetting. Old you Bern- know. You, you know who I think he looks like. Hmm. Uh, you ever seen Isaac Brock, the lead singer of Modest Mouse? No. He looks just like him, man. I'll put a picture out on the Instagram later. Mm-hmm. These dudes look exactly alike. But anyways, what were you talking about? Something this guy. Important, he's so well cast, this guy, because I, mm-hmm. I, I hate to look this at guy. him because he just looks like a guy. Um, he's got um, what uh, Chanel sometimes describes as like that BTK, BTK killer look, which I don't know if mm-hmm. you're familiar with old BTK, but he just looks like a dad. He just looks like a guy, and he was totally unassuming, but you know he's into really fucked up things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and behind that wood paneling, he's got fucking, like, big fucking shit-covered dildos and fucking power drills and handcuffs. He's really into sick shit, and uh, you always got to watch out for those really boring-looking dudes, mm-hmm. RJ. Uh, I've never been described as boring. I've been described but- as a bro. And, uh, you know, pretty dense and into those, uh, you know, those Spider-Man movies. Yeah. But uh, no one's ever described me as boring. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. So Wait, what are we talking about? I don't know. Uh, Raymond Lamorne. Yeah. So he's oh, yeah, a you hate that guy. Great villain. Yeah. You know who I hate? Who? The fucking lead character in this movie. Rex. That guy sucks so hard. <laughs> That's the first thing I noted in this movie. I was like, this guy sucks. <laughs> But uh, that, that's building a bigger picture, and I'll, I'll get to that too. But uh, continue with your description of this movie, Spurlos. Okay, so we get we get some back history with this Raymond. We get to see like what mm-hmm. led him up to the moment that we see in this movie. And uh, then we get three years later, we get a time jump, uh, which I guess for like 1988 was probably quite bold. And it seems like it's well-trotted ground nowadays uh, in the yeah. age of television and stuff like that. In fact, there's like a lot of structural stuff in this movie that I feel, um, I think it like holds up well, but I feel mm-hmm. like a lot, like partic- this movie's got a real Christopher Nolan vibe to it. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. That that non-linear storytelling. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. And, and just like the this use of like the theme of obsession and stuff like that and sort of like mm-hmm. this... Uh, uh, absent woman and stuff like that driving these two like it's also kind of like the insomnia thing because I could definitely like if you were mm-hmm. going to make like the vanishing remake by Christopher Nolan it was like it's just insomnia with Robin mm-hmm. Robin Williams like it's kind of like he would just be well suited to play the the low key killer who's just so nice and kind and doesn't really raise his voice too much and you he's never just, suspect him you never suspect you never see it coming he's just so nice unassuming but yeah anyway mm-hmm. um yeah this this movie feels like very contemporary in a lot of ways um the the score probably is a little on the dated side it's a little it's very eighty eight uh mm-hmm. but it's not bad doesn't hurt the film mm-hmm. Um, I've got some other <clears throat> rando notes about this too. Um, we could talk about the, um, the laying it on of the, the golden egg, the golden eggs and, uh, and stuff like that. The forms, mm-hmm. which like, I didn't really remember the previous times I'd watched the movie. And then this time I was like, Oh, right. Cause I remembered it very clearly where it's all going. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what's that all about those eggs? Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, RJ, Hey, what, what, what do you think about this vanishing? I, I would like to, this to be re- reissued one day by Criterion, not on the Blu-ray, but whatever's next, like the bl- the Glu-ray or whatever, and it would have a quote by Jared Duncan, and it'd be like those eggs, <laughs> whatever's going on with those eggs. I think that's a good description of this movie as as a whole, because it's got the outside, but it's got the inside too, Jared. You Is know it, what I mean? It's was, a metaphor. Uh, yeah, it's, I, it's, I feel it's that. a metaphor, buddy. How, how do you uh, like how do you like those egg cutouts at the end off of the newspaper? Oh. <laughs> so that's a uh, the, the dated things you talk about, like the score and uh, that sweet transition. It's like when you brought up Insomnia, where that movie ends on the like the neon eyes, and you're like, "Whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Where did this come from?" It's kind of like that, but uh, as you said, it doesn't really take away from it. Uh, my personal history with the vanishing. Uh, I watched it a couple years ago when I was getting hot on these uh, Criterion films mm-hmm. pre-podcast. Yeah. Uh, so this is one I actually own, and I got to say, it feels really nice to actually have a physical copy of the movie we're watching. I don't know why, but it's just 
there, there's something that like actually owning it, popping it in and seeing that criterion thing kind of spin. You're like, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Uh, you usually lend them to me, but it's, it's better when it's your own. So anyways, uh, I have seen this movie before. The first time I watched it, it was very tense. Uh, I honestly uh, and genuinely was surprised by the way it ended. Uh, I didn't see it coming. So I thought uh, my first watch, I was like, whoa, I didn't think that's what was going to happen in this movie. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot about your first watch. There's like this there's this connection that you have or there's this like thing that you're building off of because of the title. Right. And you're like the vanishing. And I think that speaks a lot to the structure of this. And we mentioned it a lot. But that fine film craft, that artisan film craft, where I think this is like. It's actually so well put together, and it's, it's, it's like a mason jar at your favorite little uh, club. <laughs> yeah, just full of like pickled like feet or whatever, and it's just there for you. But you're like a lot of work went into that, mm -hmm. um, because I think this movie actually has like uh, it's organized and structured super well, uh, where you know the title is the vanishing, and you're expecting it, right? So I think the the movie has this. It's got an awesome setup where you just you're dropped in on these characters and you're dropped in on this situation where you think possibly it's like, oh, shit, is this where she vanishes, where she gets left in the tunnel? And then it's like a big psych out and she's like, oh, she's still there. And then they go to the gas station and then that gives you more setup for like uh, who the characters are and what the backstory is. And then that builds up what the whole rest of the movie is. So I think it's set up in a really smart way where they have a psych out. But the reason I think it builds into his obsession because they have that little instance first where he thinks he loses her. And then she's like, you got to promise never to lose me again. And he's like, OK. And then she actually gets like abducted, vanished. And then he it shows it, it kind of shows like where some of these things might come from later on down the line. And I think that's really smart. And I think it's a really good way to do it. So I don't know if I said, but I also uh, really like this movie. I think this is a genuine great movie um, for a lot of reasons. So one is the setup. Uh, the other thing that you mentioned, like that Chris Nolan style, mm. yeah, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of that nonlinear storytelling. Oh yeah, you're Nolan, bro. Ooh, baby, uh, you wait until we get to uh, following, and uh, one day maybe Memento that'll be in here. But uh, I won't be able to talk about it if we if it, we ever do cover it. So anyways, uh, I love that. And I think, it again, it's a great way that they set up this movie because you're introduced to these characters and you have this play out and you kind of you kind of get a feel for them. And then one of them leaves and then it jumps like three years ahead. And then you're introduced to the other character. And like the way I think the way that they gradually show the way he was training or like not like preparing to do this abduction. I think it's so well done because at first you think it's like, fuck, he thought of everything. Like when you're getting those first little snips of him, like putting the cast on mm -hmm. and like where it goes off and it seems like it went off without like a hitch. Right. So you're like, this dude is so smart. He thought of everything. But I think the way they gradually show all of his like failings is just perfect storytelling. Like, especially with the one where, he meets like the, the lady that he actually knows. And she's like, hey, if you're looking for some strange, why don't you go to the gas station? Because yeah. every everyone thinks he's having an affair. Yeah. Well, even that scene, though, like it feels yep. like almost uh, fantasy because there's these moments in the movie where there's these yeah, flights of fantasy. Like yep. and I, I was I, thinking about it because there's the two in particular. There's the yeah, there's that scene where the woman just starts telling him exactly what he should do mm -hmm. if he wants to be successful. And yep. you're like whoa that, that's weird it's like mm -hmm. is he like, he's just having this like weird like episode where something is telling him that and it doesn't make sense unless it's, she's like explicitly saying yeah i mean if you're just trying to like fuck a woman that you don't know mm -hmm. you should go where the foreign women are dude and just says it flat out yeah but at the same time it could be like this like his pathology or whatever because there's that scene yep. and there's also the one where rex has like the weird like uh kind of uh daydream where he's chasing after the car with yeah. himself driving yeah that, that's a really good point, actually. I never thought of that because um, I took it as literal. Right. And uh, I I um, I prescri I put it into that spot where I was like, oh, this is like helping build where it shows him working through this stuff. But I think actually I think you might be honest something. I'll give you th th this one time. I'll give it give you this one that uh, I think that might actually be what it is. And that's a really that just 
that adds to this movie about like how smart it is that they're building on these things. And uh, I really like that too, where they're showing like parts of his history that lead up to it. And it's like you said, it could be, it's like that unreliable, unreliable narrator stuff where he's like explaining it, but you don't really know what to trust. And then I think one of uh, the ones that I think is the best one of that, it's like super subtle. It's the seatbelt thing yeah. where he has the permit for the seatbelt and it's about claustrophobia and how that like plays in later because it's not something that he tells. It's not a story that he tells. It's something that he tells like to a different person so you can take it objectively. And then later it plays into it and it's like, oh, that's why he's doing the thing that he's doing, right? Because mm-hmm. he's trying to live out like when he's explaining why he kidnapped her to the guy and uh, he's talking about like why he was trying to he was like towing the line with all these different things that he's experienced in his life. I thought that was just a really good way to right. show that. So, yeah, this movie's really smart. Uh, the other thing about uh, like the the way that they do the storytelling like uh, chronologically, I think is really, really good is the um, the bike racing stuff. So the first time I watched this, I actually watched it with old roommate Scott, who's a big cyclist. And uh, they were talking about it. And I didn't like because it's all on the radio in the background or like other people like uh, background characters talking about like the races. Yep. And I had no idea what that was about because I don't know mm-hmm. cycling at all. And then uh, like when he first asked the gas station attendant, uh, she he's like she was wearing a yellow sweater and the, she's like oh this guy's wearing the yellow sweater because it's a cycling thing because that meant he was in the lead mm-hmm. and I think when you if you kind of like I because I had no idea it was because Scott explained it to me but then later when you see him training to be like a murderer uh, you there's like talk of the races and yes. so it's like if you if you really knew and you were really paying attention, you could you could figure out that timeline where it's like, oh, yeah. So when when she was abducted, it was like near the end of the like the tour or whatever. And then when he was training, it was at like earlier places of the tour. Yeah. And these things all kind of lead up to each other. So it's another it's another nice little, and, little tidbit. They and got if you there. don't even really think about it, because like I had no idea that that's what that was about. I just thought, I assumed it was some sort of game, like it was some sort of like soccer thing or some sort of event happening like in the background. And I was just like, Oh, that's a way to like kind of uh, designate the time frame and stuff like that. That's cool. And like, that's yeah. all I thought about it. But yeah, no, it's uh it's just like that added level of uh, attention to detail that uh, obviously mm-hmm. the film is following quite a bit of it. Yeah. that And like, that's a, yeah, that's my point, right? Like I didn't, I had no idea. And I think most people wouldn't, but like, the more you look into it, like if you actually wanted to watch this movie and deconstruct it a little bit, you, you'd be like, okay, what is this thing they're talking about right now? And you could figure it out. But at the time I watched it, like the first time and Scott pointed out that he's like, Oh no, then he's like, that's like tour, not tour to France, but like, that's like cyclist racing. And I was like, Oh, okay. Right. And then we were watching. He's like, Oh yeah, this is earlier in the race. I was like, Oh shit. Hmm. All right, man. Cool. I was like, I had no fucking idea. Um, so I thought that was very cool. Uh, and then like there's so many subtle things in this that I think are just like great. I, I keep saying it, but like great storytelling, like the way they set up stuff and then there's quick payoffs for it. Right. Like uh, the Polaroid cues, like he's taking the Polaroids yep. and then like he uses it to like try to figure stuff out. Like Memento. Like Memento. Yeah. And he's like building all these things. And like, again, it just like feeds to his obsession where he loses her once. And then she like you see their relationship and you see what he has to lose and how important she actually is and like how much she puts into it. And then she actually gets lost and you're like, oh, I kind of get it. And then you see all these clues where it's like these things where it's like, oh, yeah, maybe this is a way he can help. And you could see why he would get obsessed about it. He's like, because if you had one picture of the very time she was taken and that was all you could think about forever. It's like, yeah, I get it. Uh, I think that's also showed best with like his relationship with the new girl, which is another one of the failings of the remakes where they're putting like the focus in the wrong place. Uh, but like, I, I love how they show that relationship. They show it for a second and Mm -hmm. then the next second they're like, it's done. And it's like, no, his he his relationship is his obsession with this thing and he can't have anything else. You don't need any. You you don't need anything more than that. Exactly. You don't need anything more than that. You don't. That's all it is. But uh, 
Um, yeah. Uh, one other thing I liked about the structure was like the uh, the subtle like de escalation of things, where it was kind of like how I was saying, where at at first you think the murderer guy like did everything right, but then you see like it slowly you sh- you show how he kind of like figured it all out, but then also how he was really bad at it too. I was like, I love that. It's really good. Uh, the last few things I'll say, because uh, so that's what I think about this movie, like as a whole. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just super well put together. Uh, they thought of everything. It's a smart movie. The more you look into it, I think the more you'll find. Because on the second watch here, there was more stuff that I picked out of it. Uh, and then you get like the scenes, like the cafe where they're like mm-hmm. they're like kind of uh, Rex and his new girl. They're like yep. meet at, waiting because they know that they've been told like they've been invited by the person that kidnapped her or whatever. And the, the whole He's time there. you get like a uh, Raymond who's like out of focus and they never really yep. break that. It's so like, like it's obvious, mm-hmm. but it's so well done. And like they build it to it really well. Cause he's not there the whole time. And then he sits down and like, you just get this great image and it makes mm-hmm. sense. And uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it, it seems like, yeah, whatever like, anyone would think about that. I'm like, yeah, but they did it great. <laughs> so they did it great. Yeah. yeah they, they, they really do. Uh, there's so much stuff that I think they do so good. There's one that's actually, because like one thing uh, we could just throw out there is this movie also has like yeah. kind of like a strange streak of humor to it. Like it's almost like yeah, this humor does. is kind of like deflating kind of the dread, which I guess is mm-hmm. like somewhat appreciated, even though it's kind of like, oh man, why do you even bother? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. But um, there's the one that I really like is like when, so Rex is looking for Saskia at the beginning. Um at the uh, gas station, he's like just looking around and he comes across like this, the part of the, like kind of the green strip where they were just mm-hmm. lying, lounging around and like frolicking, like young lovers do. And because he, he goes toward there because there's a girl that's sitting there with like strawberry blonde hair mm-hmm. with a guy who looks exactly like him. And they're wearing like mm-hmm. the exact same types of clothes who are now in the exact same spot that they were mm-hmm. in. And he kind of goes over, Oh, is that her? Oh no, that's just another couple. He's like, and the guy's wearing like a salmon pink shirt. Like it's so funny. <laughs> Cause it's just like subtle. Because um, mm-hmm. I guess like yeah, the uh, the old uh, thing you could trope out is uh, oh, it's very Hitchcockian. Uh, oh, very Hitchcockian. Because you have like the whole thing about like this obsessed male, like the man who's mm-hmm. looking for the woman, just like something like out of Vertigo and stuff like that, and it leads to yeah. his own destruction. And yeah, that you could go down that uh, old uh, chestnut road. Mm-hmm. To the- <laughs> Yeah, I I hear you, buddy. Yeah. The one thing I thought was really funny was when they're driving together and the uh, abductor is like telling him all these stories and it's just like it's not long, it's like 5 10 seconds maybe. It just shows the guy listening and he's like so fucking bored and he doesn't care at all about this stuff and it it it's done in this one <laughs> at least really subtly where it's just like the look on his face you're like he doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit at, at all about this. Whereas in the other one, it's like so blatant. He's like, I don't give a shit about your stories, man. Oh, and it's like, oh, hey. you got to spell it all out, eh? Mm, eh? Uh, eh? Yeah. And then you got, I like the uh, the sandwiches and the little container. One, one, oh, one, yeah, it's one, so cute. One uncut, one whole, mm-hmm. whatever his preference might be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like that as well because, uh, you know, some people do. So here, here's the thing. Uh, we talk about food sometimes on the show. Do you cut your sandwich or do you eat it whole? Eat it whole. You eat it whole? So I eat it whole also. Andrea cuts it side to side or like ang- angled. Okay. Do you know people Should who cut triangles. it straight through the middle? Uh, no, I don't. It's just like it's it's an awkward cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. it's hard. I think it's better to angle cut. You, for whatever reason, uh, when people put food onto a bread – in that mm-hmm. way, it seems like it's easier to cut diagonally than it is straight down. Yeah. Well, this was the sandwich cast. Uh, if you have any questions about sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. About snacks. Uh, yeah. Uh, I honestly, I have like a few other like things I thought were funny about The Vanishing. But to be honest, I don't know. I don't have much more to say. I think I think it's a really good movie. Yeah. It it's is. It's really smart. It's good. They, 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 thought, they thought it all. I don't... I don't usually condone rewatches mm-hmm. for Criterion's. I like going in fresh, but uh, this is one that you can definitely benefit from a, a rewatch on. If you, can, I guess, yeah. If, but I, get, I don't know. Do you not like find this movie like really like like oh god like do you get that sense of dread at all? Yeah, 
But I mean, I'm a grown up and yeah. uh, I can get over my feelings. I bottle them down <laughs> and I deal with them in my own way. <laughs> uh, it, 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 maybe sometimes it comes out in drinking. It might. But I mean, if that's how I have to get by, that's how I have to get by. It's no, it's no issue. It's no rat issue. Uh, no, co- I, I, I yeah. do feel that. Yeah. yeah. It does a good job. That's what the movie's supposed to do. So a couple of fun facts. Uh, oh, no. S- old Saskia, Ter Stige, uh, she apparently really won Stanley Kubrick over. Who uh, apparently uh, told uh, uh, George Schluzer, the director, that this is like one of the best horror films he's ever seen. Uh, yes. And he actually cast her for his Holocaust drama, Aryan Papers, which mm-hmm. never got made, obviously. Um, but because he abandoned it after Schindler's List came out. Because he was just like, oh, there's no point in me making this thing now. It's a fucking Man Sp- Spiel- Spielberg ruining things again. Yeah, it's like well, AI. He, he really stuck it to Kubrick with that uh, shining scene and, in and, Ready Player oh, One. Eh? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, spoilers. I didn't know about that at all. It's not like shut up, uh, <laughs> nerd. Uh, and oh yeah. So and then, and also so Vanishing uh, didn't actually get distributed in the U.S. till like 1991. Hmm. Um. So yeah, and then uh, you know, two years after George Luger, he gets called Baby. in. Hey, buddy. You want to oh, you, you, you want to you want to do it right this time. You, you want to make it for an American audience who will truly appreciate this, not this uh. Euro shit with people talking funny uh, with subtitles and crap. No, nah, man, let's, let's do it right. Let's get Kiefer Sutherland and 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 one Jeff Bridges and, and? <laughs> uh, S- oh. Sandy Bullock. Sandy Bullock and. The acclaimed actress from So I Married an Axe Murderer? Yeah. What's her face? She's probably the best performance in this movie, arguably. She is. Like, she Because she, she doesn't, like, make me burst out laughing. Yeah, we're, right. talk, we're talking about The Vanishing 1993. Um, I have never seen this movie. I've just known about it for a very long mm-hmm. time. I remember, like, maybe bits and bits and pieces of it appearing on TV over the years. Um Having like watched the original movie beforehand and just hearing this movie sucks, don't watch it. It's just mm-hmm. it's just garbage. I was like, why would I ever watch it? But I never realized one day I'd be doing a podcast, and uh, for the sake of uh, you know, you never realized. I never realized I was going to do a podcast. You know, I never. Mm-hmm. But here I am. I'm glad I didn't watch it earlier and like waste uh, a part of my life doing that. But here we are now. Got it out of the way. Um, so yeah, this is a rare opportunity to compare and contrast not only mm-hmm. a remake of a Criterion film that's happened before. We, we've covered before, like yeah, that happens all the time. Uh, it does happen; it's out there. But this is unusual, as it is a remake directed by the same director. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's only like a few other. There's a couple films I think that'll be like that. Uh, Ozu's Floating Weeds. He kind of like redid it. Uh, that's like hundreds of episodes from now. Uh, so yeah. And then some people might even say, uh, snarkily that Wes Anderson just remakes the same movie over and over again. (laughs) Those people don't listen to this. Uh, I chase those all out by like episode 20. Yeah. So yeah, those types. Uh, anyway, so this movie takes big name charismatic actors and makes them all terrible. Because uh, mm-hmm. that's one thing with the European movie. It's like these people are generally kind of anonymous, which adds to the kind of creepiness of the movie because it could happen to anybody. And mm-hmm. it's like, no, let's get big names. People go to see movies. Um, let's get Jeff Bridges, the dude himself. But you know what? Mm-hmm. Let's let's like make him European, just like the original movie. And he's going to have this ridiculous like German accent that makes <laughs> him sound like he's he has ways of making us talk. Um Hey. It is so dis- anyway. Sorry. Yeah. You keep going. So hey, what? <laughs> and and hey, you know what? You know you know that elegant structure of the original has. Mm-hmm. Let's toss that out. Let's tell this film chronologically. Let's start this movie by having us follow the adventures of Jeff, Jeff Bridges, weirdo. Um, what's his fucking mm-hmm. name in this movie? Barney. Barney Cousins. Barney Cousins. So this is the adventures of Barney <laughs> Cousins' attempt at kidnapping a woman. And, uh, oh, spoilers, because we never really talked about that when we were talking about the original movie. Yep. Burying you alive in a coffin and leaving you to die. Ah, yeah, we're uh, going to talk about some spoilers here with yeah, uh, well, this we're, ending. We're, yeah, this, we're, we're getting there. Okay, so that's the yep. first movie. I, I, I find that, yeah, I hopefully... We should have maybe more people earlier on. Uh, it's probably a good idea to watch The Vanishing before listening to the episode, but 
It's, and you it, said spoilers. The, the movie's like 30 years old. That's another yeah. thing, too. The movie's 30 years old. Holds up pretty mm-hmm. nicely. Yes, um, it does. You mean I, the remake, right? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I have a lot of sympathy for uh, George Sluger here because I would imagine it's really difficult for a director doing something like this project where you're remaking your own movie mm-hmm. not, like five years later. Um, and like all the things that you you kind of planned and thought of the first time, you don't necess- you don't really want to do it all over again the exact same way because mm-hmm. there's no challenge to that. So you're going to like second guess yourself and like outdo yourself. But on top of that, you're also working with – a completely different like cr- uh, like creative team, including editors. So um, th- mm-hmm. they're going to they're going to blow all these scenes that were done so well, and they're going everyone's going to have a way to compare them uh, and be realize why is this movie made? Why why, <laughs> why is this like really well done scene in the tunnel completely ruined mm-hmm. when you do, when you do it again? Like you just blow it. You're like there's like th- that great scene of watching Saskia as you're driving yeah. down the tunnel and you're coming toward the light and it's a round sphere like an egg, and then you see the mm-hmm. silhouette of a woman at the end of the tunnel. It's this great visual that they play back over and over again in the first film. And here yeah. it's just like cut, cut, cut. <laughs> like they just find each other and it's like oh there she is. There's like it's like yeah. what the. What the fuck is this? What, what am I watching? Keith or Sutherland just being Keith, Keith or Sutherland, Jack Bauer himself. It's Western audiences, Jarrett. They wouldn't figure it out. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, whatever you want to say about the original film score, mm-hmm. Jerry Goldsmith sucks here. Uh, he, he is just too overpowering and his sound like only works for like, big movies that like mm-hmm. are like traditional like they're very hollywood he's a hollywood score guy this is supposed to, this should be like a kind of thoughtful kind of low key score and this is just like ugh it kills every scene that it appears in it's so bland and generic in the worst ways of 90 scores yeah mm-hmm. jerry goldsmith fuck off um yeah the delivery mm. of all the scenes in this movie uh from the get go are just bad um, and here's my note mm-hmm. and maybe I'll, we can start going back and forth on this because I'm pretty sure, uh, actually, I think you dislike this movie even more than I, um, yes. Jeff Bridges is derpy face. There's so much of Jeff Bridges in this fucking movie that doesn't make sense. My two notes are Jeff Bridges, dumb smile and Jeff Bridges dumb voice. I don't understand what he's doing at any point in this movie. Like he's putting on this like it's like he's trying to restrain a smile, but he can't help it. He's like, Urgh. like that. His face always looks like he's making that sound. And <laughs> but silently, he, but silently, just Urgh. like and then his voice doesn't make any fucking sense because sometimes he has this accent. Sometimes he doesn't. And it always sounds like he's talking out of the corner of his mouth. He's talking like this. He's talking like this, but only out of the side. Like he only opens the the quarter of his mouth. That's very elephant man you got going on there. Or does? Yeah, John, John. That's what he sounds like. And that's what he looks like. It is fucking un believable his dumb face in this movie i couldn't i was watching this last night and i was like what is going on who told him that was a good idea did he watch the original one because if he did he would have seen an actor who performed a really like quiet subtle performance that didn't do any of these things like i'm here to ass- i assume jeff bridges is a good actor right yeah he's been he, in good he, he's good ac- he's actually probably a pretty great act he act i would say he's a great actor so was this just like a paycheck that was? No, I don't. Or, maybe, maybe he thought the material was crap, and he's like, "Oh, I might as well have fun with it." Much to our chagrin. So stupid. Like, yeah, his voice and his face are just so dumb in this fucking thing. Mm-hmm. It is unbelievable. Yeah, I hated this movie, Jared. Yeah. Uh, all that, like you kind of mentioned, but like all that setup and pacing, all that good stuff, the structure, is just totally thrown out the fucking window when you just decide to just show it chronologically in order. It's like, this doesn't even make sense. I, no, it's because, yeah, so you open up with, with Barney doing like all the stuff and you don't know what it's about. And he's supposed to be like, there's something off about him. And it's just like, he's doing stuff and you're like, well, what, what's all this, to, what end, what, what's all this about? And you, you spend like way too much time with him off the get go. And it's like, 
he's kind of weird and you're like, am I supposed to be like sympathetic to him? Cause that's how the other movie successful is. Cause like you introduce the couple. And so in this, you spend way li- too little time with the couple. Like they're just like, yeah. Oh, here they are. They, they're in love. And that's, that's it. And they had a fight, but they're, they're good. And, uh, yeah, like so you're now because you you've int- you introduced to them second, and it doesn't feel right, and you kind of realize mm, maybe it would be better to be like brought into the story, and then you're kind of left what's what's going on, and then you get yeah. the the other shoe drop where you get the flashback to like what's going on on the other end, and you get the build to that. It's uh-huh. what works so well. And this though, it's just very conventional, um, and you get like a more of like a flashback fill in thing afterwards, like which is like similar, but it doesn't work at that point because again. Uh, they've kind of abandoned the strategy. And like you get some weird time jump stuff too, where it's like three years later with a dirty, giving up on life mullet, Keith or Sutherland. He doesn't sleep. He's just obsessed. Uh, well, I'm Keith or Sutherland. I'm a man of principle. Yeah. I just won't let go. I'm going to write a children's book. And then, but inside the, the fucking book, I'm going to write my entire plan. <laughs> In the middle of his children's book, just like Rita musings knows too and much. thoughts. Oh, I think about you every day. Yeah, this new bitch, she sucks. I, gotta I get, hate her. I got to go to the command post. <laughs> Fuck, it's so stupid. Like, there's so much of this movie, like, that. In the original, it's done right, and then in this one, it's just like we're we're gonna go the other way, and it's like I I guess I kind of understand what you're saying, where you're sympathetic for George uh, old George Saluzier, uh, but man, it sucks. Like there's there's so many things too that don't make sense. Like in this one, they show him he's like giving this story, and he's like, and then I realized uh, it's not that I need the strength or that they need to be stronger. It's that I need to be weaker. And then he like puts his cast on. It's like, but they never showed him like attempt no. to do something strong with a cast. He doesn't even have a trailer for his yeah. car in this movie. So it, I, none of it I, makes fucking sense. I, see, it's I like, just why thought I st- that? See, I thought I stopped paying attention. I missed that part. But then I'm like, now that you're saying it, I'm like, oh no, they, they're, this is just garbage. It doesn't make any sense. Well, the one time he does get a girl in, in the car, like that the scene that's kind of the same it's not for a trailer she's like fi- fixing his like radio and it's like w- what kind of sense does that make it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make any sense it's like why is that in this fucking thing i don't yeah. get it um yeah so in here we got a uh, sandy bullock she's like after like she's like, you want a beer or something uh and i'm well, like uh, you, for the road while you're drinking and driving mm-hmm. you want you want some of that because that's an american thing i always forget that yeah convenience stores have beer so you, mm-hmm. you can literally have one for the road. Um, that one thing I think that was definitely missing, though, from the original film, uh, there was not enough Dairy Queen and McDonald's signage. Um, and, and, so much Dairy and, Queen. And, and in general, I think there's not enough McDonald's and Dairy Queen signage in thrillers at all. So uh, step up your game, uh, filmmakers. You know what's more thrilling than any movie? Going into one of those places like McDonald's and really plowing it down. And then the drive home, trying to get there in time. That's a thrill ride, baby. Hmm. That's an emotional roller roller coaster. Yeah. I can Uh, talk. Yeah. Uh, I can talk good. Yeah. Yeah. There's my note here about giving up on life mullet. Uh, It's just like, yep, because that's what happens. Uh, We get a good line here. Uh, Mel Gibson doesn't return my calls from the uh, surly uh, waitress. I love that. That's so nice. That's so 93. I, I loved it, man. It, nothing spoke to me more than hearing something like that. Lethal Weapon 2 probably just came out. He was flying high. Uh, is that where the one star for this movie comes from, probably? No. Oh, from the Mel Gibson talk? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I really dislike this movie, man, like for a lot of reasons. like. Mm-hmm. So w- we talked about the ending uh, where I think the ending is such, like, such horse shit where it's like they just totally – I think the ending in, in like the original – is so not unique but like so like it just really hits you and then this one it's like yeah we're just gonna do away with it western audiences they can't handle a loss they need a win here but i feel like they could have or it's like we just got to do something different it's like all right you know what would have been really funny jared uh i mentioned this on my letterbox review Mm -hmm. it would have been funny if he was like all right here's where the coffin is and she dug it up and opened the coffin but it was like 
the the other girlfriend from three years before and yeah. you just see like a decayed Sandra Bullock <laughs> and then he's over because he would be over top of the hole and he'd be like ha got you and then he would like hit her with the shovel and that's and he would say gotcha <laughs> gotcha oh gotcha sucker uh, 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 there is the line where he goes I hope you like roast beef <laughs> hope you like roast beef and he says it with a smile too and he's just like like is that like why is that funny <laughs> he's like He's like, I really hope I know this guy hates roast beef, so I made him a roast beef sandwich. Oh god! So, so speaking about like horrendous performances, mm-hmm. this movie's packed full of like that. Like his daughter in this movie, Barney's oh, yeah. daughter, she sucks. Like even for like it, little kid actors, like man, she's just like because there's like you have a movie, you already have the template of like what the yep. line readings for this movie should be, and they just like nah, let's just shake it up, let's just make this as yep. bland and poor as possible got your nose don't you don't you know got your nose don't you know got your nose is is this fucking tommy (laughs) wiseau don't you know got your nose i think the delivery of that stuff is so like it's so bad too because like because there's like that nice moment and then it's like are you it's like you should have an affair or something and then or it's like are you having an affair she asks and then in this one it's just hey you should probably have an affair i hate mom mom fucking sucks and he's like, got your nose. Don't you know, got your nose? <laughs> None of it makes sense, Jarrett. Uh, yeah, then we get the uh, anagram garbage show where like Rita's like trying out anagrams because oh, there's this throwaway sorry. line about like, oh, he's really into anagrams. anagrams. And then it's like, oh, the password to log in must be an anagram. I'm going to try my name first. Nope, doesn't work. Hmm, maybe the anagram's for his long missing girlfriend oh and it is and her name boils it down to vanish at vanish her or some whatever it is well i was so gonna like, say it's only like part of her name too it's not even all the letters in her name so yeah. it's not even a real anagram no it's this 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 is a quite quite the motion picture hey you know what's like a good version of this story that's like an american hmm. version of this that's way way better uh breakdown with kurt russell it's oh, like okay. it's very Take similar. It's, it's, it. it's the idea of like a, a guy and his girl. They they get split apart and on the highway, and uh, she disappears, and he's trying to find her. That mo- mm-hmm. movie's oh, you'd love it. You you you'd like the breakdown. I'm we'll telling. See. You'll see. Hey, you you know what else? The last thing I have to say about this remake, maybe not the last. Oh, I, but... I've got oh, I've got more shit to say. Okay, you want to hear one thing that really fucking upset me in this movie? What's that? At the start, where he like chloroforms himself and knocks himself out. Yep. Uh, oh well. By the way, in in the uh, original one, like they show that he's like a chemist or whatever, and he's like doing equations on the chalkboard. Mm-hmm. I bet if you looked up what that equation was, I bet it would be like chloroform or something, because that would have been like a nice another little note. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it's not. Who knows? Anyways, so in the remake, he's like chloroforming himself. And the fucking hand that comes into screen, it doesn't look like his hand. It's like this really old person hand, and it's super fucking huge. Like, it doesn't fit his face or his body at all. It doesn't make sense. I swear to God, it is not his hand. It's somebody else's uh, hand. I, I hope you took screenshots of these I, things. Oh, I did. I did. Okay, I'll put yeah. them out there later. Good, good. It's not his hand. Yeah. I don't know what, what it is. Like, it, it's the weirdest fucking thing. Okay. So you, you want to hear, like, I what I think this film's biggest crime is? I mean, okay. I'm not even talking about the end. I'm not even talking about like the fucking blown ending. This is the one that actually makes me mad, um, in like a way that I'm actually not mad, but it's just like eye rollingly like, oh, this movie sucks. The most horrifying scene from the original Vanishing is for <laughs> me is when Saskia is getting chloroformed. That's like so uh, yeah. that, that that is fucked up. Like it's yep. so scary because it's so realistic because it's exactly mm-hmm. what it would be like for like a woman to be like, yeah, I'll help. I'll, I'll begrudgingly get into your car. Cause I see you've got a photo of your family and they look really nice. And like, yeah, well, <laughs> this guy's normal. And then you sit down and go, fuck now I'm dead and raped and all these horrible things are going to happen to me. Um, her like eyes, like she's like making eye contact with Raymond and like her eyes are like, like, Oh my God, I'm so goddamn scared. Uh, please let me go. I like, please don't kill him. Like it's like all that whole range of emotion, but they make eye contact because mm-hmm. you're like trying to like make a connection with the person doing this to you, even though they've already made the decision by the time they've done this, that they're like, I sorry, mm-hmm. like I've already gone this far. We're not coming back from it. So, let, let's just like fuck that up 
tier too. And uh, let's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. just it's just like done this generic thrillery way. It's not, like not memorable at all. The eye contact thing, nah, let's not do that. Let's just like it's just oh, this that's the pinnacle of how this movie's a failure. Doesn't it have uh, one of those? It does it a couple times in this movie where it's like a triple zoom in, where the it like this yeah. scene cuts and it's like yeah. a little it's, closer, yeah, and then it cuts just, again and yeah. it's a little closer. Yeah, it's not just holding the scene on it and just no. like like letting the horror sink in without sound or music or or like not there's sound but there's no music. Mm-hmm. Oh, driving it home, Jerry Goldsmith style. Yeah, no, it's such a so blown. This movie blows. <laughs> oh yeah, this movie um, blows big time. But I laughed a lot. Uh, I was laughing pretty good as this movie started like winding down and it got into like the stupid thriller slasher territory of um, you get when uh, when uh, Jack Bauer uh, his mm. his reaction to being buried alive and like the whole like punchline of like how like how fucked up the other movie is we get mm-hmm. Jack Bauer going no <laughs> like it's just like this hilarious <laughs> no. And and he's like, things fine with it. Like really quickly, mm-hmm. he's just like, oh, well, I guess that's that. I guess I'm dead. And then they were like, oh, let's get past that though, because that's not the ending. Even though it's like, Jesus Christ, it's so messed up. When you mm-hmm. watch the original, you're like, oh fuck. Like, yep. yeah. Not only is like mysteriously disappearing like really horrifying, but also the idea of being buried alive in a coffin. That's mm-hmm. pretty fucked up too. And nah, nah. Let's not play that up. We don't need that. Well, well, we just watched that Ryan Reynolds movie. Uh, Buried? Yeah. Yeah, that movie's not bad. It's not too bad. It's not bad, um, yeah. So, okay. There's the whole bit earlier on in this movie with... Uh, I'm just going to start calling him Jack Bauer. Uh, Jack Ooh. Bauer beats the shit out of uh, Jeff Bridges. Like, real bad. Like, he's laying in shots to the ribs, tossing him down flights of stairs because he's pissed off that this guy's just shown up and admitted, <laughs> I, I kidnapped your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's beats him up and he's like fine like he's like kind of roughed up and his face is all puffy and stuff like that it's mm-hmm. a, i guess that's like okay good they sold out a bit but then when it comes down to like when barney like comes to grab rita in the woods <laughs> he she just like knocks him out with one shot for like yep. like uh for you know 15 seconds flash knockout he's just like out and you're like wow rita really nailed him with that huh <laughs> Um, that's how movies work Jay. And then wrote this note in all caps why am I laughing out loud at the end of this movie uh, Jesus Christ <laughs> Jeff Bridges going all schnobberob brother you won't understand that mm-hmm. reference mm-hmm. back in the day a friend of mine we made these movies uh, about just Eastern European uh, stereotypes before Borat got there and uh, oh, <laughs> and really uh, yeah but it's just like this. it's like basically when I do like a like yeah just like essentially a racist impersonation of an Eastern European accent uh, mm-hmm. It sounds like what Jeff Bridges is doing, and like it's just it's so ab- absurd. He shows up at one point with a saw blade, and you're like, uh, "What's he going to do with that? He's going to start hacking her up while she's alive." <laughs> he tries to cut her head off. Yeah, it, and then he gets jokered, and then he gets also fucked, yeah, stolen he gets, by J- yeah, Chris Nolan. He gets shoveled to the face. Yeah, and, and he's like, Rawr. and uh, and then we get the big punchline of the movie. Oh my god! <laughs> no coffee, thanks. <laughs> we don't drink that anymore. With, with some ninety soft jazz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this movie, um, boy, this movie sucks, dude. What a ride! Yeah, yeah, the vanishing's pretty bad, my dude. Make mine spore loose. Yeah. Oh, we don't drink coffee anymore. <laughs> and then it's like a, a camera on the fan moving ahead, just spinning yeah. as it goes out into space. <laughs> Fuck, that's bad. Oh. oh, baby. Or so good. Maybe. Do you think people actually like that movie? Uh, I should I should look into that and see who loves the remake. Okay. okay so I'm, I'm I got gonna, that one covered. Okay, so that all being said, uh, who hates Sporlus? Who? Who? Mm-hmm. One star PC DOS. Some interesting yeah. structural elements service a hollow, empty thriller lacking in thrills, catharsis, or feeling of tragedy. When an antagonist's motivation boils down to because, spending an hour's worth of time with them is thoroughly uninteresting. Beep boop. Um, I think that it is good that it's like just because. Hey, Peak DOS, you know what their favorite movie is? Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Hmm. Mm, strong politics. They also gave Scrooge to half star. That seems a little out there. Hmm. Come on, guys. 
Uh, Celestine, one star. Wow, this was boring and in a foreign language, mm. which I did not know beforehand. <laughs> you, you can't get mad that it's in a foreign language. Uh, Fucking Chud. <laughs> Celestine uh, might be uh, the audience that uh, the Vanishing remake was aimed for at. Possibly, we'll see. Uh, they're a fan of Get Out and The Exorcist and Inception and Princess Bride. Wow. Princess Bride, Jarrett. Huh, they it. also gave Mean Girls five stars. There you go. And speed. I don't even know what this person's name is. The the font's so small. Merum? Merum? Merum. Yeah, it's a Merum with a period, dude. Yeah, it's it's weird. I don't like it. It's complex. Well, you don't um, have to like it. That's what not an, what we do here. What an absolute boring, uninteresting film. <laughs> Thanks for wasting my time with that high rating, smiley face. I found essentially nothing to like here with frankly incompetent storytelling and direction paired off with a dull duo for leads. There's a five-minute stretch after The Vanishing where the film looks like it'll be a tense, paranoia-driven thriller and begins to be genuinely terrifying. But uh, Slugier decides to shoot himself in the foot with a stiff flashback to the killer who loses all enigma and replacing it with comically inept villainy, which theoretically could have some nice Hammett-style upturning of expectations. But Slugier is too in love with Blondie to let him fall from his lame sociopath pedestal. I really don't get why this film is ever cited over nearly all of its precedents in subsequent films. If it is just because of the wacky sea getting people all hot and bothered, why not shoot with insomnia, which is much more competently told with more compelling Hmm. leads? Hell, even compared to that silly film, Secret Window, which it too has too much in common with The Vanishing, just doesn't stand for me. Uh, Insomnia is one of their favorite movies. They Hmm. like a lot of uh, Hitchcock stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of porn, Jarrett porn, Belladonna Sadness, Ooh. Uh, Caligari, and uh, The Red Shoes, a uh, creep favorite. So this person might be a creep-er. Maybe. That's crazy that they didn't like The Vanishing if they're such a big fan of... Other um, the quality cinema. Yeah. Mm, oh, weird. Well, give, give me a second here, RJ. I'm going to find out who loves the remake. Ooh. Beep, boop, I, boop, uh, boop, 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 boop. Not oh, you. Is that internet noises? Yep, that's me dialing in. Yeah. Um, shampoo ch- cell, five stars. <laughs> I have always and will continue to defend this remake. Everyone got so mad about the <laughs> plot changes, but they gave depth to the Nancy Travis character, where she was just a prop in the original. If that's all that require, if that's all that's required to make this movie five stars, I don't <laughs> know what to tell you, shampoo. I don't know what to tell you because I will admit that that Nancy Travis is probably the best performance in the movie, like mm-hmm. you know, because it's like how there's no other challenges. Sandra Bullock's barely in it. Uh, uh, Jack Bauer is like typical Kiefer, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, Jeff Bridges in one of his strangest, like baddest performances. Uh, oh, four and a half stars from wait, wait, wait. So, okay, shampoo sells. Loves Beetlejuice and Heather's. <clears throat> but I'm also seeing some weird trends between people who hated the original Vanishing and this movie. They all love Get Out, <clears throat> and they all hate Lady Bird, hmm. which seems really weird. <clears throat> My voice went. I don't know what's happening. S- Keep going. Seems pretty woke to me. Sofa uh-huh. Cinema, four and a Ooh. half stars. Complex, tense, and perversely funny. Often overlooked because of the comparisons to the original Dutch release. There you go, Dutch. There uh, it is. Yeah. Let layers of the mystery unfold in a playful manner that is never overbearing or frustrating. This expertly scored and edited film seems ahead of its time in its portrayal of a Gone Girl. Yeah, mm. I've seen that one get dropped a lot. People really like. Remember when people talked about Gone Girl? And people still do. I heard someone the other day say it was their favorite movie. I'm not even kidding you. That's interesting. I saw that and I thought it was okay. And mm-hmm. I haven't thought about it since. Uh, and a clumsy and conflicted antagonist. Jeff Bridges is one of my favorite actors. And from now on, I'll find it hard not to think about this one when I hear his name. Uh, so the Sofa Cinema, they uh, their current favorite movies are just all Burt Reynolds stuff. But you know what movie? You know what other movies they hate, Jarrett? What? They gave two. They've only ever given two half star ratings: Alien Covenant 
and Wet and Wild Summer from 1992, directed by Maurice Murphy. Hmm. It's about Australian surfers. <laughs> I don't know. It looks okay to me. I don't know what the problem is. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, one more here. Why not? Alex DeWing. This is my kind of horror film. Not <gasps> poltergeist, guts, or gore. Just an incredible slow burn that puts you in the place of the protagonist, <laughs> Jeff. Up. Desperate to know what happened to Diane Shaver, <laughs> there is a deeply uncomfortable atmosphere running through the film, which makes this horror so compelling and has a very satisfying climax, with the plot taking a climb chilling turn in the third act. And simply great to see a kick-ass and sleuth-like female character in Rita, whose arc was the most satisfying to watch. Um, this all sounds fake to me, you know. It does sound fake. Yeah. Uh, their favorite movie is Shape of Water, and they don't have a lot of hated movies other than uh, Zoolander 2 and Mission Impossible 2. Huh. Seems seems weird. Yeah. Well, that's it. We've, we've given the voice to people. We've heard both sides of it. Um, yeah. I, I, I stand by uh, my conclusions. Hmm. I stand by all the opinions that I mentioned earlier in the show tonight yeah. that I'm not going to repeat to you now. Perfect. After the break, um, I am going to not think about disappearing or loved ones disappearing because it'll just send me into a spiral of things I can't control because it's, it's irrational to think this way. Um, yep. Hey, quit being weird. Yeah. <laughs> 